So how uh, how long does this book take you to read so I could finish it off in a day and a half? <laughs> um, I think it took me. It was either it was somewhere between like three to six months, um, but not not super long. And that's just to like write and a little bit of revision. Um, now, because now I'm at the point where I can write a book in about three months if I'm really really trying. Um, if I'm writing every day, which is something I did learn at Butler from Dan Barden. Um, he was like, you have to write every day. And I do try to write five days a week, maybe not the weekends, but, um, but yeah, so now I can write pretty quickly if I, if I have a good plot in mind. Well, definitely. I wanted to ask you more about your writing habits and what that three months looks like, but now we have to, I forgot to ask you about Dan Barden. So you, <laughs> you, you did go through the Dan Barden boot camp. <laughs> I did. I did. He definitely taught me that, you know, you need to be writing as much as possible. I mean, his thing was timed writing. You write for like, I don't know, like 40 something minutes a day. But that didn't work for me. I just would just stare at the clock and be like, well, now I only have 41 minutes left. Like, um, <laughs> but it did work for me to count up. And so I do word count. And so I would try to hit minimum 500 words a day. And sometimes that's super easy and I'll blow past it and write 3000. Um, but sometimes it's, you know, a super busy day and I've got a lot going on and I don't get anything, you know, I get barely those 500 written. Um, but having that goal makes it more like a job, makes it um, something that I have to do, that I have to get done, that I won't feel accomplished during the day unless I do it. So. Three months and every day you're doing something, at least 500 words. Do you try to write at the same time a day or does life just not allow for a luxury like that? It just depends. Like, you know, if I have a lunch break, maybe I'll take that. Um, if I wake up early, I'll try to do it then. Mostly I write after work. Um, and that's when I do my best editing as well. It's kind of before dinner or after dinner, somewhere in there. Um, so it's kind of like go to work, come home, write, eat dinner, write some more, go to bed, do it all over again the next day. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of a it's a long schedule. But if you want it to be a job, then I feel like you really do have to treat it like a job. You have to schedule time. You have to show up day in and day out, even when you don't want to. Do you have, uh, I'm fascinated by little writer rituals um, <laughs> uh, that go into starting a day. Like I don't sit down uh, until I check the internet for at least 20 minutes. Uh, and then I walk around the house a little bit. I've usually got my cup of coffee with me. Uh, and then depending on what I'm working on, I usually pick out one or two songs. If that's the theme song, that's my Pavlov's bell. That when I hear that theme song, that puts me in the mood of the story. Uh, so like, for example, when, when I was writing my zombie stories, it was always Johnny Cash. I see a darkness because by God, if it's the zombie apocalypse, you're going to want some Johnny Cash. And then I'd hear, I hear that and I'm like, okay, I'm in the frame of mind. So do you have little rituals that get you into the story? I mean, I do listen to music when I write, and I'll usually put a song on repeat. It may not be the same song every single day, but usually I'll listen to the same song a couple days in a row. So it is kind of, yeah, like that Pavlov's Bell of like, oh, I should be writing right now. Um, so that definitely helps. And I either write in my bed or on my couch, um, just somewhere comfy. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of more of like sitting down and doing it. Um, I don't really eat snacks while I write. Some people are always like, what do you eat while you write? And I'm like, nothing, because I would spill it all over my computer and no one needs that. Or I would get crumbs all over my bed or my couch. So don't want that. Um, but I do like for Tiger Queen, I listened to the Katy Perry song Roar on repeat <laughs> for a good long while. Because um, it does. It it's it's it. It's yeah, it was. <laughs> It worked so well, um, and it was all about her, like, facing down these tigers, because um, the music video was in the background, and so I would just, like, occasionally catch a glimpse of it, and I'm like, all right, and then I would, like, study the tigers in the video and, like, their movements and all that good stuff, so, um, so yeah, I definitely think music is my biggest kind of, like, writing motivator, um, I'm, okay, I'll tell, just tell you this short, funny story, so, um, I love this, the TV show, Say Yes to the Dress, where women go and buy wedding dresses. And in a couple of the seasons, they have this new song at the very end of, of, this, of the show. Um, and I started, I really liked the song. So I looked it up and I started using it and for a shirt, for a certain short, for, well, for a certain story I was writing um, as kind of like that. Instead of Roar, I was listening to this other song from the show. And then every time I would watch that show and that song comes on, it is literally like Pavlov's Bell. I hear that and I'm like, oh, I should be writing that story right now. Like, it just happens. So I think if you can kind of get in that mindset, like, it works. Like, now every time I hear that song, I'm like, oh, I should go work on that story. 
So, so maybe pick maybe pick Elmo or something. Like if you're if you're a stay at home dad, every time you hear Elmo, you're like, oh, I need to go right right now. Like make it work, oh, make that it work. Would be a disaster. Uh, <laughs> happen is the moment I went to sit down to write then there would be uh, Mr. Five-year-old himself. Hey, I need this. I need this, Daddy. I, you thought I was watching Elmo, but I need the following five things. Like, yes, son. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had to stop watching The Leftovers because it was a show that hooked me for the music. Uh, oh. And I loved the soundtrack. And I was actually annoyed that it, <laughs> the soundtrack was so beautiful it wasn't being used for a better show. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that became my my Pavlovian bell for the Book of David, uh, and then I never watched beyond the the first uh, season of, of Leftovers because I was like, "Hey, the show is doing its thing. I'm gonna have a much better story, but I'm gonna use that music." <laughs> so when the music would come on the show, I'd be like, "Nope, that just makes me think I should be writing. I'm not being entertained anymore." <laughs> and I wanted to ask, uh, well, maybe I just wanted to blow up Dan Barton because I. I and never had an opportunity to, to talk about him uh, on the show. And I quote him every class I teach. I, I don't know if he ever gave you his metaphor for when he worked construction, that if he got into the construction site and he looked at it for a minute and he had a cup of coffee and then he looked at the building he was supposed to be working on. And then he went and he got a donut and he sat back and then he thought, I can't do it. I just can't do it today. And then walked off the lot. That was not a successful job he was going to keep. But I, that metaphor has been locked in my head forever that no, Writing is a job when you come to it. Get to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's it. Dan Barden, author of John Wayne and Novel. We love you. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Would not have gotten to that 500 words, you know, a day kind of thing if it weren't if it weren't for him and his his idea that you really do need to write every day. So thank you, Dan. It's hardcore. In fact, at one time he cornered me after a class uh, in the parking lot and he said, "You know what your problem is, Kent?" I'm like, "No." Uh, Lots of things, probably. It's like, well, this this particular problem today uh, is that you're just not drinking the Kool Aid. I was like, what? It's like, yeah, everyone's drinking the Kool Aid. You need to drink the Kool Aid. Like, man, you know that metaphor for Jim Jones ends badly, right? This is not making me want to to fall in line. And he's like, well, I mean it in a positive way. I'm like, All right, thank you, Mr. Barton. <laughs> I will take that into consideration. <laughs> but the construction thing, dead on. <laughs> 